Hey, what's up guys? It's Robin here and um, this video is going to be my uh, early mid-game guide. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about, um, probably I'm going to go over like all the one cost and two cost units and let you know if um, how good they are in the early game, if they're worth picking up, and um, what kind of units you want to, you know, what kind of units you want to uh, play around that unit. Um, there are certain openers that are really, really strong right now and it's probably going to be nerfed uh, in the future, such as uh, Sentinels and Skirms. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just gonna get right into it. So first off, we have Aatrox. Um, I would say Aatrox is not that valuable of a good unit. Um, I, I usually don't really pick up Aatrox that much. Um, so wait, what Aatrox is good for is, um, you, for Aatrox, you can play a redeemed opener around Aatrox. So, um, if you have Aatrox, you would pick, uh, Leona and Varus, Syndra, or Varus to pair with, uh, um, Aatrox. So let's say you get in like an early Aatrox 2, then you're gonna be looking you're gonna be looking for that Leona, looking for that Varus, looking for that Syndra for the early three redeemed. And you're gonna you're gonna play around that. Um but I, I can say that the three three redeemed opener is not that strong unless you like um you know like two star everything. So this is a common redeemed opener. It's gonna be Leona, Aatrox, Varus, Syndra, and then um your level three or your level four, level five, you can take out Syndra or Varus or um and then play like a knight. Let's say Poppy usually. And then you can have two knight, three redeemed. And then at level five is a pretty awkward level, but you can play a ranger for Varus. Um, or you can just play like a Syndra. Even though you get four redeemed, um, it's it's still pretty strong to get an extra redeem unit because they get a buff from the redeemed, three redeemed. Um, at level six is when you can play four knights, Nautilus plus Thresh. And then this becomes like significantly stronger. Um, it be, it's really, really tanky with uh, three redeemed and four knights. And then from from this spot, you probably just uh, play into Volkaz, uh, three or six redeemed Volkaz. And then you item hold, um, you item hold Varus or you item hold Syndra. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, some, sometimes you could pivot from a redeemed opener into like um, Heimer Invokers, but uh, it's a really expensive pivot. So usually you just end up playing Volkaz if you have this opener. Besides the redeemed opener, um, Aatrox can, is also a legionnaire and can also be paired with units such as Callista. So an early Aatrox to a Callista 2 is pretty strong, um, and you can probably transition this into like an A-bomb uh, mid-game with Brand and uh, Nunu, something like that. But Aatrox will be dropped eventually. Uh, if you high roll Riven and Yasuo from orbs, you can also play 4 legionnaire with uh, Riven and Yasuo. But this is a very, very rare situation because um, you, you'll rarely get a Riven and Yasuo from orb or from shop, right? Um, and that's about the only good openers with Aatrox, to be, to, be, to be honest. That's why I don't really pick up Aatrox, because Aatrox, you're either playing Redeemed, or you're either playing, like, around Callista. Um, and then these two units fall off really hard, Stage 3. So it's, like, a really, like, weird transition into, like, certain comps. Next up, talk about Gragas. Uh, so Gragas, um, basically, there's no more Warwick anymore. So, uh, for the, one, the other 1-star, uh, bra one, one cost Brawler. So with Gragas, you're usually it's it's the same thing. You're gonna be playing like a Dawnbringer mixed Dawnbringer Brawler opener. So units such as Kha'Zix pairs really well. Um, and another unit is uh, another unit is Sejuani. Sejuani is now a Brawler. So then look out for Sejuani. And if it, and then if you don't get Sejuani, you can play the set as like a last uh, last resort thing. Set is not very good, but he's still a Brawler. A lot of times when I when I play Gragas, I'll look for the Sedge and then. Um, you can play Kha'Zix, and then if you hit a Nidalee on Soraka, you can play 4 Dawn. 4 Dawn, 2 Brawlers, which is pretty strong. And you just, like, item hold Nidalee, and then you pivot into an AD comp, whether it's Draven, uh, Aphelios, Lucian, or Jax. Let's say you were to get uh, a lot of AP items, um, you would probably just, like, item hold Soraka, and you can either play, like, Soraka reroll, or you can pivot into Karma, which are both, like, pretty, like, not S-tier comps, and you'll probably be playing for top 4. So besides like Dawnbringers, you can literally just, Gragas can literally just be a brawler and you can play around like the Sejuani, like um, it would be Sejuani, um, Gragas, and then like you can get the Nightbringer with like Lee Sin, and then with Lee Sin in you can get Skirms in, um, you can, if you get in Yasuo, you can play like a Legionnaire with Yasuo, so you can like just play around the Sedge, uh, and, and uh, Gragas would just be a brawler bot. So Gragas I would say is like pretty similar to Aatrox, uh, I don't really like playing a Dawnbringer opener, but, um, you know, if you get the Gragas too, but uh, Gragas is a brawler, and then um, it can be paired with Sejuani, who can be played into, like, a ton of comps, uh, a ton of S-tier comps. So, um, Gragas is, is probably a little better than Aatrox. 
Um, another thing you can do with Gragas is uh, if you get a Nunu, um, you can get you can pair Nunu with Gragas for Brawler, and then with Nunu it opens up uh, A Bomb, which is really really strong right now. So if you have a Kalista and Brand, you can play three A Bomb, two Brawler, something like that. Uh, Kalista. So yeah, Kalista. Um, for per me personally, I don't really like picking up Kalista, but that's because I don't play A Bomb that much. But if you're like a um, if you like playing A Bomb, you would value Kalista pretty highly. Um, just pick up the Kalista, you, you need to try to get Brand, and then you need to hit it, uh, Nunu for A-Bomb. The reason why I don't like picking up Kalista is because you have to hit Nunu to get A-Bomb. If you don't get A-Bomb, Kalista's actually, like, not that strong. Uh, if you get a Kalista too, it is pretty strong, but the synergies around her, like, um, isn't that strong. Um, but, you know, you know, obviously, if you do hit a Nunu, um, the Kalista's, uh, value goes way up. Like, if you had a Nunu from Orb, you do want to pick up the Kalista's and the Brands to, to activate A-Bomb, which is really, really strong, uh, mid-game. But let's say you don't hit the Nunu. You're gonna be playing like probably like an Aatrox to activate the Legionnaire, or you can just play like any frontliner, Poppy, Leona, and Kalista would just be your backline damage. But then this like falls off uh, pretty hard, uh, stage three. Um, you can play the Brawler with Gragas, Sedge, stuff, something like that, and then and then at level level five, level six, you have more chance to get Nunu, and then you can pivot into um, um, A bomb. Um, another thing with Kalista is if you're if you want to hard force Draconic A bomb and you want to open fort or sack all of Sage 2, you, you'll be wanting to pick up the Kalistas because um, at level 6, 3, 2, when you roll down for your 3 Draconic, 3 A-Bomb board, um, you would want to get the Kalista 2. So you're going to be holding like all the Kalistas on your bench uh, if it doesn't cost you Econ. Um, but that's it for that's it for Kalista. Like, as you can see, like the only good traits that you can activate early game is A-Bomb, and that only happens if you hit Nunu. And then honestly, Legionnaire is not even that good early game. So that's why I don't value Kalista that much. Kha'Zix... Kha'Zix, same thing with Gragas. If you have if you have like Kha'Zix too, you definitely want to get the Gragas. It's the cheapest Dawnbringer, and then um, you can get like a the, the earliest uh, sin you can pair with Kha'Zix is going to be Pike now. So you can play Pike, and then you just play another Brawler. So this is a common like front line with Kha'Zix sins. But then like for this board, your level five and level six is just gonna be like kind of weird. Um, you know you can't you can you can fit four Dawn with Soraka and Nidalee. And then, but then if you're, if you're carrying, I, I really don't like carrying Kha'Zix because carrying Kha'Zix, it, it's really strong stage two, but it falls off stage three. So, um, you're going to be like, you're going to probably like win a lot of stage two, but stage three, you're going to fall off really hard because there's going to be more units on the board and Kha'Zix is not going to get ISO damage every time. Besides four, four Dawns, um, now it's really, really hard to get four Sins in because in order to get four Sins in, you need to hit the Diana and you're not going to, you're most likely not going to hit the Diana, right? Um, level five, level six. So four sins is, is hard to activate. So that's why I don't really like the uh, the sin opener as well. So I I I I, I don't pick up Kha'Zix too often. Um, usually for Kha'Zix, uh, he's usually just like a I, I you like you don't play Pike here. Usually he's just like a um, if you get a Kha'Zix too, he's just like by himself sin that has backline access. So a lot of times maybe I'll play Kha'Zix and I have like the let's say I play like a cat I got a calf frontline. And I have a Kha'Zix too, and I want to get a Dombringer. Maybe I hit an early Nidalee. So Kha'Zix is basically like a Dombringer bot to buff Nidalee and each other. And I, I'll probably just play around Nidalee, which is a way better carry than Kha'Zix. So I'll, pre, I'll play like Skirms and stuff like that. Yeah, so usually Kha'Zix is for me is like a standalone, usually like a standalone assassin, or like just to activate Dombringer for another unit. Kled. Kled is actually pretty, pretty strong, I think, early game. Even at one star with no synergies, Kled usually does a lot of damage. When you pick up the Kled, you do want to get like a, another Cavalier to, to make them take here, whether it's Hecarim or Sejuani. Um, usually you do, you only want to play two Cavs, uh, three Cavs, the, the spike isn't that much. It's usually, usually not worth playing. So um, if you have the, um, if you have the uh, Kled, you know, you could play Hecarim to buff it. If you have the Sedge, you play Sedge. If you ever have Hecarim or Sedge, you probably are just going to drop the Kled and play Hecarim and Sedge. Uh, another thing for Kled is uh, um, you can play Hellions around Kled, obviously. So the Ziggs, Kennen, and you know Poppy activates four Hellion, which is pretty strong. And then if you ever have like this opener, you're probably just you're probably just like playing Hellion reroll if you're uncontested. So like if you have like this type of opener, Ziggs two, like Kled two, Poppy two, one Kennen or something. You you probably you, you probably just want to play Hellion reroll. Like usually you play Tristana here, um, no Ziggs, Tristana like Kennen, um, and then this is a, another good board. Um, level five you can literally you can add in like so many units. You can add in a Cavalier, you can add in a Knight, you can add in a Cannoneer, and go from there. Um, but usually for Kled, most of the time I use Kled as just a Cavalier bot uh, to buff my Sedge or Hecarim, because um, I think for me playing around Hecarim and Sedge is way better than playing around Kled. Because personally, I don't play Hell and Reroll that much. 
Um, but, um, you know, if you hit a lot of Cleds, you can play Hellion Reroll, uh, play for Cled carry, or um, still play for Trishana carry. Leona. So Leona, um, I would say, is a pretty high value. I, I, I value Leona pretty highly early game because she has the knight trait. And getting two knights early game is actually is, is pretty strong. Um, and she can also build you into the redeem path, you know, if you get the Aatrox and the Syndra like I talked about before. Um, and, then, and then Leona. And then uh, Thresh for two knights, or Poppy for two knights. Sample redeem board, as I talked before. Besides redeemed, you can literally just play Poppy Leona in, in any comp, and it'll be pretty strong. Like, let's say you get, like, um, Olaf, Udyr, and, like, um, Kennen. You have three. You can play around three skirms, and you're just playing the two knights just to buff your team and frontline. So that's why I, I, I value Leona pretty much. So Leona early game is a knight used for two knights or used for the redeemed opener. Besides that, it's it's um, besides that it's pretty um. There's no other use for Leona. Um, onto Olaf. Olaf is one of the best best units early game. If you ever see an Olaf, you absolutely want to pick it up because it has the two most broken traits early game: Sentinel and Skirm, especially Sentinel. Three Sentinel early game is completely busted. And I think it, sh it will be nerfed in the future. So Olaf, what do you play around Olaf? Um, obviously, you want to play skirms, right? Um, the other, the other, it's really, really easy to get three skirms in now because um, there's another one cost skirm in Udir. So if you have Olaf, look out for the Udirs, and then you just need one skirm, one more skirm to activate three skirms. And usually that's Kennen. It could be Kennen. It could be Lee Sin. It could be Nidalee. It could be Aurelia. There's actually so many, so many um, hit uh, hits that you can hit get for three skirms. Now that you're guaranteed like five to six gold, um, you get three cost orbs way more often. So hitting a Nidalee or a Lee Sin from orb is very, very common now. So that's why it's like really e easy to activate three skirms. But the absolute best three is going to be, in my opinion, um, is going to be Olaf. And you definitely want to play look for the Aurelia because Aurelia activates uh, is also a Sentinel and you're one Sentinel away from three Sentinel. The third sentinel you usually play is going to be Senna, which is a one cost uh, sentinel. And Senna is like, um, arguably Senna 1 is stronger than the other early game sentinels, such as Pike and like Rakan. Um, but this is like a common like level 4 board I'll play. Um, obviously you do want to get a better, you do want to get a better skirmisher than Udyr. Um, the best skirmisher in my opinion is going to be Nidalee. Uh, because Nidalee can actually carry you all the way stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4 with the right items. Um, so Nidalee is like completely busted. Besides Nidalee, you know, Lee Sin's good too for more frontline. Even though you kind of already have a frontline with Aurelia. Uh, and then sometimes you can just play Cannon. I would say like strongest to weakest is going to be Nidalee the strongest. Nidalee is probably the strongest. And then Lee Sin. And then Cannon is probably... Cannon, Cannon and then Udyr is probably the worst. Uh, but you know, it's it's probably the easiest to get Udyr. So this is a sample of a 4 board. And this board is really, really like flexible to make a strong board um, into mid game. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you hit the um, Nidalee, then your level five, it can be Riven for Legionnaire and Dawnbringer, which is probably one of the strongest openers in the game. If you don't hit Riven, you can play a Gragas for Dawnbringer or you can play a Soraka for Dawnbringer, right? Um, that's usually the level five if you have Nidalee. Um, you can also play, uh, you can also play Tristana to activate Cannoneer with um, Senna, which is also pretty strong. Um, let's say you don't have the Nidalee and you have a Kennen, it activates the Hellion, so it's perfect. Synergies. Even if you have like a Udyr, like uh, Tristana is good to play next. You know, let's say, what if you don't have a Kennen, what if you don't have a Legionnaire or Cannoneer, who do you play next level? Usually I'll just play like a random Skirm, like Kennen or Nidalee. It'll, it'll benefit from the Skirm buff and uh, it'll probably be your strongest board. Um, so let's go to the strongest board here. Riven, this is your level 5. Your level 6, you can play a Cannoneer over here. If you don't have Riven, you can play the Gragas. Your level 6 will be a Brawler, right? So Sedrani. Let's say you play Soraka. Your you, um, your level 6 can be like a Renewer, uh, Rakan, to activate Soraka. Or it can be just, just be like another another strong unit like Lee Sin or whatever. But let's go with this level 6. This is like one of the strongest like level 6 boards, I would say. And then from at level 7, I would say is uh, the mid game is over. Level 7 is, is like early late game. So level seven is when you usually want to pivot your board into a late game board. So th so then you can like start selling off units. This opener, um, you can pivot into like almost any AD comp in the in the in the uh, in the game. So let's say this is your board and you have your item held uh, Nidalee. Let's say your Nidalee items were like Last Whisper, Hodge. So what can you play from here? You can literally play Lucian. You can play Draven. You can play Ophelios, and you can play Jax because um, they can all use Last Whisper or Hodge, right? That the comps that you will more likely pivot into, the top two is going to be Lucian and it's going to be Jax. The reason is because in the Lucian Jax build, you're going to be keeping Aurelia and Olaf. So it's the transition is and and, and sometimes Senna. 
So the transition is pretty smooth. So let's say you're playing Lucian, right? Um, let's say you roll down at 4-1 and you hit a Lucian. Um, all you have to do is you play the Lucian. You can tr you can sell Tristana. You have the two Cannoneers with Senna. You can keep Senna. You sell the Nidalee. You transfer the items onto, um, onto Lucian. You drop the Riven. And then you have four Sentinel. You just play two more Sentinel for six Sentinel Lucian carry as, as, as for one. So let's say you get the Galio plus like the Rakan. Then you have six Sentinel and you have one extra slot, you know, for Nautilus for Knight or something. Something random. And then you already have your you already have your four one board, which is pretty strong. Let's go back to the original board. Nidalee and Riven and Tristana. Let's say you roll down, you hit Jax's instead of Lucian. You want to play Jax. So then it, in this case, you drop Nidalee, Riven and Senna and Trist. And then you'll play Jax, but you're going to be keeping Aurelia and Olaf the whole game, which is which is really really good. And then for Jax, you know, um, if you watch my comps guide, you're going to be playing Fortnite Jax. So you're going to be looking for the Galio, Thresh, and you know, Leona, um, Nautilus for four knights. And then you have four knights, three Sentinel, three Skirm, uh, which is your level seven board. When when you're when you're transitioning to your four one board, you usually want to keep like the best transition is that you can keep one, two, or three units that you're already playing which makes the transition smoother. So let's go back to this board. Imagine you're pivoting this into, um, imagine if you're, you're, if you're pivoting this into like Draven. Um, even though it's still doable, you're gonna have to like sell everything except for maybe Aurelia and you need like Hecarim 2 for sure. You need a Cav, you need Draven, you need MF, you need Thresh. Like it, it's, it's a pretty hard pivot. Um, let's say you wanna pivot in this into like Invokers. Like that's like literally impossible, right? Like pivot this into A-Bomb, you have to replace every unit. Um, pivot this into like um, Heimer, you have to pivot every unit, and you pivot this into Vel'Koz, it's, it's like every unit, right? So depending on what you play early mid-game, it, it, it heavily influences what you should be playing um, late game. Um, so that's why I would say like this board can pivot uh, really easily into Lucian and Jax. And if if, if, if you hit like um, Draven 2 on rolldown, you can play Draven. Like, I'll give you an example of how I transition this into Draven. So we do Hodge Last Whisper here, and then we just roll down, we hit Draven. We happen to hit Draven 2, you, you're going to play Draven, to, Draven right, if you hit Draven 2. So what you're going to do is you sell Senna, you sell Triss, you put in Draven, Thresh, Hecarim, MF, and then you're going to sell the Riven and Nidalee, transfer the Nidalee items onto Draven, and then you can sell the Olaf, you'll keep the uh, Aurelia, and then probably you just play Nautilus and Rel or something, and then you have your level 7 Draven board. You, you keep the Aurelia. Um, as long as, if you can keep one unit, that's like good enough, and that's your Draven. That's like a common pivot into Draven. So yeah, this is why I love this opener so much because it's such an easy pivot into one of the, into the, like the S tier comps late game. So yeah, um, so that's Olaf. Um, if you ever have Olaf, look out to play this early and mid game. Um, let's on, next up, we'll move to Poppy. As, as I talked about before, Poppy. If you have a Poppy, you can either play around Hellions and play Hellion reroll, or Poppy is just a night bot, just like Leona, and you can play anything around it. Um, skirms. Uh, you can play like spell weavers, whatever. Uh, so Poppy is actually like uh, I also highly value uh, Poppy. Senna. So as I talked about before, Senna is a really, really high value tar uh, unit because you can activate three Sentinels early game. So um, always, I always pick up Senna when I see when I see her. You want to play Olaf and you want to play Aurelia uh, for three Sentinels. If you don't hit Aurelia, you can play Pike, three Sentinels. But then this is kind of awkward because you don't, you can't get. It's hard to get Skirms in, and playing Sins isn't that strong because you have no front line. So um, you want the Aurelia, you want the Sen Senna and, pa and Olaf, and you play the board that I just showed you. Besides that board, you Senna can also activate Cannoneer early game. So if you're playing like uh, Tr Tristana reroll, um, always look out to pick the pick up the Senna's so you can activate Tristana's Cannoneer, and then you just you can play like a Poppy Leona for knight knights. So two Cannoneer, two knights, also pretty strong early game, and then um, you can fit in for more Hellions and stuff. Next up, we have Udir. I'll say I I also highly value Udir just because um Udir can activate skirms early game three skirms with the Olaf, uh, but it's not as valuable as Olaf because it doesn't have the Sentinel tag. Um so so Udir is literally like an early game skirm and if you want to activate three skirms. Um another an, another thing for, about Udir is that Udir activates Draconic. So if you get like an Ash or Zyra from Orb, all you need is Udir or Set right for um Draconic, and then um so you want to be holding the Udirs if you're looking to play Draconic. Next up we have Vayne. This unit is complete trash. Um, I never pick up Vayne because uh, Forgotten early game is a is is a Keck, and um, if you carry Vayne, it, it feels really really weak. So personally, I don't pick up Vayne ever. I don't. Vayne is like one of the lowest value units 
in my opinion. Um, I think Vayne can only be good if you slam like Gwinsu's Runons, but it's like, what are you going to play with Gwinsu's Runons, right? Like, obviously, if you're carrying Vayne, you kind of want to pivot into like Draven, but then Draven like isn't that good with Gwinsu's Runons. So it's just like, it's a, it's a weird, it's like not that strong early game and it's a hard pivot into late game comps. So usually I don't pick up Vayne, but if you were to play Vayne, you're going to be, you're going to be playing the Ranger, right? Varus, and you play Frontline. So let's say you get, we play the Thresh to activate Forgotten. You can play Poppy for Knights. But usually you want to look up for the Hecarim because Hecarim is way tankier than Thresh. And then like like Hecarim and, 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 uh, and uh, Sedge. Something like this. You can hit play the Thresh and MF for 4 Forgotten. And this isn't too bad. Another thing is like Vayne is just a Ranger bot for Varus. If you're carrying Varus and you have like uh, 3 redeemed Leona plus uh, Sinja or something. And then plus Poppy at 5. You can get 2 Ranger, 3 redeemed, 2 Knight as I talked about before. Vladimir. So for me, Vladimir is also a low value unit. Since there's no more Lissandra to activate his Renewer, you have to get Soraka or you have to get Rakan to activate Renewer, which is like pretty rare. Um, and then Soraka and Vladimir don't really go, don't really have good uh, synergies with each other. Um, I would say Vladimir is mostly a uh, early Nightbringer, Nightbringer bot for Sejuani to activate Nightbringer. And let's say you get like a early Yasuo or Lee Sin from Orb, you do want to keep the Vladimirs so you can activate uh, four Nightbringer um, if you ever get Yasuo, Lee Sin, and Sej. Which is pretty pretty strong. But besides that, like I don't really I don't really play Vol Vladimir early game that much anymore. Ziggs. So for me personally, I don't really value Ziggs that much because I don't play AP comps. But if you were to play, if you liked playing Vel'Koz, uh, if you like playing Invokers, if you like playing Hellions, if you like playing Karma or whatever, uh, picking up Ziggs is really good because it's an easier transition into those AP comps because you can play uh, a Spellweaver early game. You just play Ziggs brand plus like um, two knights. So this gives, this gives you two knight, two Hellion, two Spellweaver, which is pretty pretty strong early game. And then obviously you can also pick up Ziggs if you're playing Hellion reroll. Another thing about Ziggs is that Ziggs, um, as a standalone unit, is one of the best units to, to pick up to kill units. So let's say you're like, oh, let's say your board is really, really bad and you just want to kill some units, but you're, you know you're going to lose anyways. You're going to be playing like as many Ziggs as possible. Ziggs is a single target, um, has a single target ability. So if you play like two Ziggs, you can like uh, focus the same person and you'll automatically like almost always kill at least one unit, right? So that Ziggs is really, really good for killing units. Early game, like a sample early game, you can play Brand, Ziggs, plus Leona and Poppy. And then let's say you get, and then from here, you can you can pivot into four Redeemed, something like Syndra plus like Aatrox. And then you can pivot from this easily into uh, Vel'Koz. You just item hold uh, Brand or Ziggs and then you just sell these for like Vel'Koz, right? Um, right now, it's hard to get four Spellweavers in because you need to get Vel'Koz to hit four Spellweavers. There's no more like Victor and stuff. So that's why I don't value Ziggs that much. Um, but Ziggs is extremely good for killing units. Next up, I'll kind of go over the two cost units. These are like, these units, uh, you'll rarely like be able to um, upgrade them early game. But so they'll usually be, they, they usually won't be your carries and they'll be your, um, they'll be your like, uh, um, like synergy bots or something. So with Brand, obviously, with your, when you have Brand, you're gonna be looking out for the Nunu and Callista for potential early A bomb. Besides that, um, if you want to carry your own Brand, you want to play the Ziggs for Spellweaver and whatever for line you can get, Cavs, Knights, whatever. Hecarim. Uh, so I think Hecarim is a pretty high value unit. It did get nerfed, but it's still pretty strong because I think Cav early game is one of the one of the um, tankiest front lines you can have early game. So Hecarim plus Kled is very very strong early game. Hecarim plus Sejuani is even stronger. And then with, with this, you can literally play into anything because this is just your front line, right? So you can play whatever back line you want. You can play like, you know, Sins, you can play Kha'Zix Pike. You could play uh, Spellweavers with Ziggs Brand. You can play Skirmishers with Udyr, Olaf, and a random Skirm like Kennen or Nidalee. Probably the most common one and the strongest one is you're going to be playing around Sedge and you probably playing around like Nightbringers. So um, try to get the Lee Sin in. Try to get the um, Yasuo in if you get an early Yasuo and you can get Vladimir for 4 Nightbringer. Something like this. This is pretty strong. You can also go the Forgotten route. So if you have an early Hecarim, let's say you get like an early Vayne and, an, and a Thresh and you have you got an MF. You can play 4 Forgotten and you just activate the uh, uh, Hecarim with a Sedge, with, with a Cav. This is basically playing around like um, Hecarim carry with like MF side carry. You can And then you can transition this into Draven. Or you can transition this, you can just play MF Cav reroll, right? So you, you're, you're going level 6 and you're just playing Nautilus here for uh, 4 Forgotten, 2 Cav, 2 Knight, and you're just going to be rolling at level 6 for everything 3 star. Uh, next up we have Aurelia. This unit is the most broken unit in the game, especially early game. If you ever <coughs> if you ever see this unit, you, you, you almost, I mean not almost, you always want to pick Aurelia up. Aurelia activates too many things, and the main thing is that she's, she's a Sentinel and she's a Skirmisher, um, along with uh, Olaf. 
So two units with the same traits is completely busted. And then as you as you see from the board before, um, it's going to be Senna plus um, a random skirm. <clears throat> Strongest opener in the game. Let's say you don't have the Rillian, right? You can literally, if you want to play skirm, you need to play like a random skirm. Let's say you play Cannon. It's so hard to get three Sentinels in. You have to level up to five to play a Pike for three Sentinels, right? So, so Aurelia, think of Aurelia as, as basically you have a free fawn, I would say, if you're playing this opener, right? Because uh, you need to play an extra unit for Sentinels, whereas if you have Sent if you have Aurelia, you already have a Sentinel and Skirm. So it's like completely busted. But I'm not going to go too much into this opener because I already talked about it with Olaf. Kennen. So Kennen, uh, as I said before, uh, activates skirmish three Skirms early game for you, and it's also a good unit for Hellion reroll if you ever hit. Okay, Nautilus. Um, I would say Nautilus isn't that high value of a unit because um, Thresh is almost always a better two stock two cost a knight, and it's also really hard to get an Ironclad early game, right? Um, so if you were to play a two cost knight, it would probably be Thresh. Nautilus is usually just a knight knight bot. So if you have a Leona, look for the Nautilus for knight. If you have the Poppy, look for the Nautilus for knight. But usually, like if I have Leona and Poppy and and Nautilus, who do I pick to choose? I probably choose to uh, stay with the uh, to pick the Leona because it's easier for me to two star Leona than it is for Nautilus, right? But if you're trying to play strongest board that turn, you're obviously going to be playing Nautilus over one of these one cost knights. But besides that, Nautilus is pretty uh, pretty pretty useless. I would say early game. Um, if you are trying to get the four knights, you absolutely need Nautilus. So that's when Nautilus becomes high value. But besides that, I usually don't pick up Nautilus because he's kind of too expensive. Pike, uh, I I usually don't pick up Pike early game. Um, I think he's a little bit too expensive and he's not that good because I don't think the Sin Opener is that good anymore. Uh, so Pike is usually just a Sentinel bot if you need a third Sentinel. Uh, Sejuani. Sejuani is like Aurelia is one of the strongest units in the game because um, she, she also has three traits. So as I talked about before, with Sejuani, you want to activate the Cav trait with either Kled or uh, preferably Hecarim. And then with Sejuani, you do want to play around Nightbringers. Sejuani is a, uh, is also has Brawler. So instead of activating her with a ca um, Cav only, you can also get play a Gragas uh, for Brawler or a Set. Or a Nunu. You can potentially play four Brawlers like this early game, but make sure you have ba uh, backline da uh, damage. Common openers I'll play with this is probably uh, <coughs> Hecarim, Sedge, Gragas, and then I'll play like a uh, Yasuo, <coughs> which is super strong. And you can pivot this into Yasuo pretty easily. As I said before, you can play the four Dawn as well, Vladimir and Lee Sin. Set. Um, Set is probably one of the weaker Brawlers early game, um, even weaker than like Gragas. Um, so usually I don't pick up Set unless I have Draconic. So unless I have like Lee, uh, Ash or Zyra, you can play the Udyr uh, Set for 3 Draconic and then you usually play like a Brawler level 4. Try to like, you probably won't win too many fights, stage 2, but you try to like um, save H as much HP as possible. Yeah, so Set is most common for the Dracon Draconic Opener. Set can also be used for a brawler bot as a Brawler bot to buff Sejuani um, or Gragas or Nunu. Soraka! So I don't think Soraka is that good early game, and she's basically used for, as a Dawnbringer uh, bot to, act, to, to buff Gragas, Kha'Zix, or Nidalee. Or if you want to play 4 Dawn, you, you need the Soraka. Um, another thing Soraka is good for though is if you have like, if you get like an early Soraka 2 with AP items, you can play the Soraka reroll comp. So it'll be like, uh, early game probably be like you want to play Gragas for the front line and you want to play like a brawler probably so Sedge and then Soraka and then if you had a rock early Rakan you can activate the Renewer if you had Vladimir you can activate uh, Nightbringer and Renewer so this is kind of good except you lack damage look always look for the Rivens the Nidalees and the um, the Kha'Zixes to activate potential uh, for Dawn if you have like a heavy heavy Dawnbringer opener you could item hold Soraka and pivot into Karma um, but it, they're, they're, um, Karma isn't that strong right now. Syndra, if I ever have Syndra, I'm always, always playing around Redeemed. Um, as I talked about before, Leona, Aatrox, Varus, something like this. Because because Syndra has no other traits, right? The, her other trait is Invoker, and you can't get Invoker in until like, late game. So if I ever have Syndra, it's always playing around Redeemed. Thresh. Uh, Thresh is... Uh, I, I value Thresh pretty highly, because Thresh is uh, probably the best two-cost knight you can play. And also Thresh um, activate. Thresh is just a good unit generally, and activates uh, Forgotten. If you were to play Hecarim, it, it gives them an early Forgotten, where um, it allows you to not play Vayne, which is really good. Um, but usually, uh, usually, usually, most most games, I'm using Thresh as a knight, uh, as a second knight with my um, Poppy or Leona, and uh, or as a Forgotten to buff Hecarim. Uh, Tristana, I would say Tristana is a really really strong early game champion and a strong item holder for AD comp AD units such as like Draven, Lucian, and stuff. But if you play the Tristana, always look to play the Senna for two Cannoneers, and you can play the Poppy and Leona for um, Hellion Knights, which is really strong. And then level five, level six, you play the Cannon, or and then play like a Kled for four Hellions. 
Trisana can go into one of the strongest comps openers in the game with its three skirm, two cannoneer, whatever. Um, yeah, so basically, I think with Trisana, you just want to pick up the Senna to activate cannoneer and play whatever frontline you can get. Knights, Brawlers, uh, Cavs. Lastly, we have Varus. With Varus, I'm almost always also always playing a redeemed opener with Leona and uh, Syndra or Aatrox. And then with if you're carrying around uh, Varus, if you have like a Gwyn on Varus, you do want to play the Vein to activate Varus uh, Ranger. Um, always look to play Knights around Varus, which is extremely good uh, to pair with Redeemed. Um, level 5, level 6, you can play 4 Knights like this. Level 5 is Ranger, 2 Knight, 2 Ranger. And then level 7, you'll just pivot into like either Vel'Koz, or you can probably pivot into Aphelios because you're item holding Varus, right? And Varus items, you can just transfer to Aphelios. So let's say you're let's say, let's say say you were playing a board that, sh that pivoting to um, Aphelios. So you're going to be playing Varus and Vayne. You'll be playing Ash once you get Ash. And then you just play whatever frontline. You play the Leona and you play Poppy. You just play a random redeemed. And then next level you can play. Next level is honestly pretty pretty uh pretty flexible. You can't really activate too many traits. Play like another redeemed. And then if you want to pivot to Aphelios, you just sell this. Um, sell this for Aphelios. And then look to and you can keep the Ash and then look to get in like a Sedge and then play whatever units around um, Aphelios. So the Varus opener is a common like transition into Aphelios. For the three cost units, I'm gonna roughly go over all of them like really quickly because you won't see that much like you'll see a uh, three cost play for sure in stage two because of the three cost orbs now. But I I went over most of them in my other in the other champions right. Um, so Ash is gonna be just like an early Draconic or early Ranger. Lee Sin, Lee Sin is played in um in the Yasuo Sedge opener or if you have a three skirm. Lulu is only only played probably in the Hellion reroll, but even in Hellion reroll, you probably don't play Lulu because Lulu is too expensive and you can't really fit Lulu into like level six, level seven. Lux, uh, you only played in Redeemed opener. Miss Fortune is played in the Forgotten opener or Cap reroll. Um, she, you can also use her as a Cannoneer bot, but usually you just want to be using Senna. Um, you can play Senna Miss Fortune or Senna uh, Tristana. Uh, Nidalee, one of the most broken skirmishers early mid game. You want to play in the OP three Sentinel three skirm board or a Dombringer board. Nocturne, I never pick up. Uh, I don't like the Sin opener, so I never pick up Nocturne until like stage four if I want to pivot into Sins. Nunu, extremely broken, um, can activate a early A bomb really easily, and is a really really good brawler. Uh, Rakan, usually I don't play Rakan that much. Um, Rakan is mostly a Sentinel bot, but usually you just want to play the cheaper Sentinels like uh, Senna or Pike. Riven, Riven is usually played in a four Dombringer opener, or you can just play Riven to activate Legionnaire with uh, Aurelia and uh, Dombringer for Nidalee in that board. Uh, Yasuo, one of the most broken comps right now at the time of this video. If you ever, ever have a Yasuo from Orb and you have like a bow or, or, or a Hodge, you want to just like commit to Yasuo. With Yasuo, you want to be playing, uh, definitely want to be playing Sedge, is the best frontliner for Yasuo. And just play around Lee Sin, Brawler, um, Legionnaire, stuff like that. Last, we have Zyra. Zyra is, uh, if you ever hit an early Zyra, try to get the Draconic, so Udyr and Set. Um, and you can also play like Spellweaver around Zyra. But usually if you have an early Zyra, you just want to like open for play Dr Draconic Zyra or something. That's it for my uh, early mid game guide. I hope you learned something from this. Um, let me know if there's other strong openers that I missed and I'll see you guys next time.